So my name is James Dwyer and I'm one of the two certified uh, teacher trainers at Mod so Lego certified teacher trainers at Modern Teaching Aids. And the other teacher trainer is Joanna Burke, who I mentioned is on the chat function, will be answering your questions during the presentation. Okay, so to give you an idea of what we'll be covering in today's webinar, we've got to basically, we'll be showing you the Spike Prime kit. We'll go through some of the sensors and the programmable hub. We'll review the software, which is the sort of real powerhouse behind this product. And in that, we'll be exploring the unit plans that are in there, um, demonstrate the one of the units in particular, Super Cleanup, and we'll also demonstrate the scratch-based programming that it uses. We'll also review some of the really helpful online support materials that are there for teachers. And as I said, we'll have a Q&A session at the end. So remember, if you wanna bring up that chat function, just hit the Alt and H key at the same time. All right. So, First of all, about Spike Prime, it's a really nice addition to the Lego product family, which um, is targeted at years five to eight. So we've got the we do, where this fits in, basically we've got the we do, which is um, targeted around grades three and four. Then we hit the Spike Prime, which is targeted around years five to eight. And we've got the EV3, which is probably a more complex pr um, platform, if you like, to program with. Um, and another really great one. And it's targeted from years five through to about year 12. And I know it's even used at uh, UNSW in their mechatronics course. So even into university, people are using that. So today we're talking about the EV3, which is targeted about years five and eight. Now from, the ver from its very inception at Lego Education, it's really been designed with their core philosophy in mind that play is essential to learning and building confidence in students. Now that philosophy itself, is, is based on Seymour Papert's theory of constructionism. Now, which is the idea that children learn best when they are actively engaged in constructing something that has personal meaning to them, be it a poem, a robot, a, a sandcastle, or even a computer program. So as teachers, we all know intuitively that it's optimal to have kids engaged in hands-on and playful activities. Now, Lego have sort of broken down this idea of, of play, if you like, of, of educational play or, or hard play, if you like, in, and found that there are five things that are essential to it. One is that for the students, it has to be joyful. Um, if the students are finding the learning joyful, they're indulging their curiosity, they're intrinsically motivated, and they'll take ownership and initiative in their learning. And you know, I guess the best example I've got, and this is as a, when I was working as a teacher and also in the workshops that we run, the face-to-face -face workshops, some of the times at um, just before um, recess or morning tea or whatever, you're basically trying to take the robots off the kids or, or kick them out of the classroom. So, you know, you can get them outside. You can see the kids just don't want to leave. They're having that much fun. They're that engaged. And so that's, you know, they're the sort of lessons where we're wanting you to create with, with, these, with these tools, if you like. And um, the other thing is that the, the activity has to be meaningful. It has to be, in, in, you know, they've actively engaged. It's iterative where they go back and they'll make something and they'll have problems with it. And then they'll um, realize that they, if they make this adjustment, it'll fix this particular thing. So it's that sort of iterative learning, which is really essential. And it's socially interactive. Now, on the socially interactive thing, the ideal ratio, the, the sort of research and, and um, what, Lego, what Lego espouses is that you've got one kit between two children. So that way they're sharing. That, so if one of them needs inspiration from the other, they can inspire each other on. Um, and you know, one of them can build and one of them can program and they share ideas. If you have um, too many kits and, and some people just due to budget constraints, you have a one to three or a one to four ratio, it's, it, it can work, it's just harder because you'll often have one of the children sitting out to the side, not so, um, enga you know, less engaged because they just can't get access to either the, the, the hardware or the software. And so the ideal ratio still is um, the, the, the ratio of one kit per two students. Okay, now the, um, the concept behind building Spike Prime is the, the build, it, you know, the whole idea behind it is building student confidence and teaching STEAM with Lego Education Spike Prime. So it's all about, um, and that's where this, why it sits between years five and eight is as opposed to five to 12, is that this is designed to make it easier for both sexes to get, 
to, to, to engage with it. It's in, it designed to give those kids who find the EV3 perhaps a little bit intimidating, it's designed to make it easy. And you'll see that if, in everything about it, even down to the color scheme that they've used, it's bright, it's colorful, the, the unit plans are easy to follow and we'll go through those in a moment. Okay, now, essentially the PowerPoint is broken up into two parts. We're gonna have a look at the, the hardware itself, the Spike Prime set and the Spike Prime app as well, or the Spike app. And that, um, you know, that, as I said, is where all the, the curriculum support and the, the guidance is, and it's, it's really fabulous. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna have a look at is the, the motors, the, the hubs and the, the, the hub itself, the motors and the sensors. Okay, so I might just swap to the, um, to, and bring up this so I can see. All right, can I ask everyone to turn their, their videos off if possible? Okay, and I'll bring up, okay. So the first thing, I'll bring up, okay, just a sec. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so we've got the, um, the hub here, okay? So this is the programmable hub, and you can see it's got a, recycle a um, rechargeable battery inside it okay which is great it's a move away from the AA batteries um, it's also got here it's it uses to charge the recycle battery it uses a standard standard micro USB uh, connection there so it's the same one that Android phones use it's the same one that uh, lots of different devices around the house use and so it's it's great they put a standard port in there at the other side, they've got the little speaker. And then if we turn it on, okay. Well, the other, the other feature is you can just see in the design of it itself. It's a little rectangle build with lots of points of contact, which makes it really easy to put robots together. And that's one of the things you'll see in the unit plans as well, how quick some of the builds are and the lessons that are involved. So um, you can see there, there's so many different ways it can be attached and created. So you turn, turn it on here and you'll see the screen lights up and it's got a five by five matrix on the front, which can display letters, um, images like that love heart and, uh, and letters and that sort of thing, words and numbers. Okay, so the other thing you'll note is it's got six ports to connect, okay? And you can connect up either motors or sensors. It doesn't matter on the EV3, you used to have to connect sensor ports, sensors to sensor ports and motors to motor ports. This doesn't matter. All six ports can be used for either motors or sensors. So that's a really nice um, advantage or improvement, if you like. Okay, now we'll jump in and I'll just bring up some of the software. Okay, and we'll have a look because this is also, not only is it a, um, a programmable hub, it's also a sensor. It's got an a, um, uh, accelerometer in it. So I'll just share this screen for the moment. Now, where we are at the moment is in the, um, this is in the software. This is the palette where you create programs. Now, we'll go through the software in greater detail in a moment, but for, the, for now, I just wanted to show you this and we'll make a connection to the, um, to, to the hub between the software and um, to the hub. So I'll just go try and connect via Bluetooth. So I push the little Bluetooth button and if all goes well, we should get a connection. Okay, and there it is. You can see it's come up on the screen with a little Bluetooth symbol. It flashed up for a second. Okay, and for some reason, it's requiring an update at the moment. So we'll get that going. And I, strangely, I had that problem the other day as well. And um, I'll pull out, while that's updating, I'll pull out another hub that I have here. Okay. Okay. As many of you are familiar, there's sometimes a um an issue with uh, uh, technology. So I'll pull this one up while that's updating. So I'll just disconnect that one. Okay. 
Okay, and we'll do a cable connection. Okay, so you can see here, I've got I've now cable connected it in. Okay, and when you come in here, you get to see, you, I've, where I went for that is just up here in the software. It gives you an indication up here that you're connected. It tells you it's got the the hub's gone green that icon. So I click on it, and here is a list. This gives you a bit of information. This hub has been called MTA-10. So essentially, you can name all the hubs for when you're Bluetooth connecting devices. Okay, it tells me here that the battery is 80% charged, and it would tell you what OS is on it. You can also go to this manage programs. I'll come back to this screen in a moment. Manage programs, and it lists here all the programs that have been loaded into it. And there's you can load up 20 programs from zero to 19. Okay, so and you're able to rename the hub here. Okay, so if I drop back over here to the dashboard. You can see on here, it displays whatever's on the screen. Okay, so as I move across, you can see it changes. There's a program in slot zero, and there was a program in slot two that I put in there. And you can get feedback here about what sensors are connected to which ports. So you can see here that there's a pressure sensor connected to port E, and I'll explain that in a moment. But what I really wanted to show you was this section here with the yaw, the pitch, and the roll. So that's the accelerometer inside. For those of you who are familiar with um, drones flying, pitch, yaw, and roll, dictate how the, how the drone will fly around in, in space. Now, some of you will, that will be familiar with that and they'll understand those readings. It's about how much the, the brick itself is, is turned and don't worry about it because there's a simpler way you can look at this. You can open it up, change it to orientation and it just tells you which side of the brick is up. So at the moment, the front is up. If I turn it that way, the top is up. If I turn it on the side, the left side is up. Turn it the other way, the right side is up or the bottom, or the back, okay? So you can use that information to do things in your program and create programs. So you can use it either in that very simplified, which orientation is up, or you can do it in tilt angle and accelerometer and gyroscope, that sort of thing. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea, okay? So we'll just jump back out, and then I'll introduce some of the other sensors for you as well, okay? So the next one I wanted to show you, okay, is the distance sensor here. It's a little bit like the ultras, well, very like the ultrasonic sensor in the EV3. And so it's a nice one. I'll plug it in. And you can see as I've plugged it in, up here, it's just displayed an image of the distance sensor here. And it's giving me live readings of it. So you can see as I narrow it down, it's giving me readings. It's telling me that my hand is about 15 centimeters away. Okay. You can use that sensor for your robot to detect. Um, how close it is to a wall or an object as it moves towards things, that sort of thing. So if it goes below a certain threshold, maybe you want to move your robot back. You know? So there's all that sort of feedback. And, and those sort of things are used in automatic doors, are used in those taps that you put your hands under, you don't have to turn, they automatically turn on. All sorts of places, you'll find sensors like that. Okay, the next sensor I want to show you is attached here. Okay, that's the pressure sensor. It looks very much like a touch sensor. Okay, and you can see as I press down, okay, it's, it's the, the previous touch sensor used to, it was either give you a reading of on or off, either it was pressed or it wasn't pressed. Okay, and this one you'll see at the moment it's showing zero, it looks like it says on, but it's zero newtons. As I press down, you'll see that'll change. I'm now applying a pressure or a force of four newtons on it. And it goes all the way up to 10 newtons, okay, at full pressure, okay? So the, um, the force sensor is a really great addition to it, okay? So you can use that to control motors or determine how, how much uh, um, pressure is applied in, a, in the um, super pickup gripper that I'll show you after, okay? So there it is, the, um, the, the force sensor. The another one is the color sensor, okay, which I'll show you here. Okay, and you can see as I plug it in, it will automatically be detected and appears there on the, on the screen. Okay, so it appears up here, it's telling me that it's connected to port C. At the moment, it's got that um, little icon showing that uh, no color is being detected. As I wave this yellow block in front of it, you're getting a yellow. As I put, you know, whatever color I put in front of it, it will get a, um, it will read that, okay? And for those who are familiar with um, line following and that sort of thing, 
you can swap it over. You can come back in here. You can see here all the sensors are connected and you can swap it over from detecting color to reflected light mode, which will give you a reading of, of grayscale for those who are familiar with it. Um, if you're not, don't worry, you can use it in color detector mode, but this will give you a percentage of how much light is reflected back into the sensor. Okay, so a really great addition to the, um, to the sensor range there as well. Okay, so in addition to the sensors there that we've got there, there's also, we've got these motors as well. So we've got um, uh, the, the medium motor and the large motor. And these have encoders inside them such that, and I'll show you particularly on the, the large motor, it's, it's got an encoder inside it and it can tell how many degrees it's turned or how many rotations, okay? So you can work out if, if you want, you know, if you add wheels to it, that sort of thing, you can attach a wheel to it and depending on the circumference of the circle, you can do all sorts of really cool maths activities where depending on the size of the wheel, it'll determine if you tell it to go forward one rotation or 360 degrees, you can then measure out how far the, the robot has traveled and you know, where you're trying to get kids to travel a certain distance and work out um, how many rotations the wheels have to use, that sort of thing. So there's all sorts of great maths activities there involved in that as well. Okay, so, what we might do is, and I'll just show you quickly some of these things working in a, um, in a, in a, just, I've just got to pull this particular design apart. Okay. I'll rebuild that in, in just a moment. Okay. But. So you can see I'm detaching all the, the motors and um, at the moment, okay, all the sensors. Okay, so if I attach this on, what I wanna show you is how we program this particular brick, okay? So I'll attach that onto the back of it, okay? And I'll attach that into one of the ports, okay? The other thing I'm going to attach down the bottom is a light sensor, okay? And I'll attach that into one of the ports as well. As I said, doesn't matter what port you use to connect motors or sensors, they'll all work, okay? So now if I'm coming in and I want to create a program that uses this, okay? And so this is the scratch style program we use. We've got all these sort of caps, what it uses, and we create stacks of code. So with the caps, you can see when the program starts, the first thing I want it to do is use the encoder inside the large motor to set this to zero. And zero in this case, because of the way the motor is set up, it'll drag that beam down to the bottom. So no matter which side I put it, it'll take the shortest path. So if we just test that, so I'll come over here and I wanna load that program into slot five. So I'm down in the bottom left, sorry, bottom right corner. So I'm gonna load that into slot five, and I come down and I press the, the yellow, and it will start up that program. Okay, so, okay, and you can see that start. So it doesn't matter where I put it, I'll just stop, stop the program, okay, then hit it again. You can see no matter which way I put it, it always goes down to that zero reading. Now, the other thing I wanted to attach on here, or I have already, is this color sensor. So if we want a piece of code that reacts, depending what, um, what sensor I put in front of it, so we might, depending what color I put in front of the color sensor, okay, we might grab this particular stack, okay, and we'll grab as well, we'll shine a little light, okay, and we want it to say here, we could either have it display a smiley face, or we can come down, erase that, and put in, I'll just, write my own R, okay, and you can see there, oh, we'll go that way, and I'll get rid of that one, and so R is going to display, okay, for red, and then I want it to play a sound, so I'll come up here and I'll grab a little cat meow, okay, and then I want the motor, which is connected to port A, okay, I want that to move in a clockwise direction. Well, not one rotation, but I'm gonna use degrees, but let's say 180 degrees. So I'll just type in there, 
180, okay? So now, when I run it, the other thing, what we might do is duplicate this as well, okay? So I just right, right clicked on the hat, and so I want to now change it. So I want one red and I'll have one blue, okay? And this time around, we'll change that, okay? And rather than display R, I'm gonna change it, just clicking on that, it'll now do a, a B or a, what looks like an eight. I can come in, I can select a different sound, okay? So add a sound, and you come in here, and you get all these sounds. Okay, and just a quick one, we'll do the, maybe we'll go with the basketball. You can come into this sound editor, you can edit sounds, you can record your own, you can trim them. There's a whole bunch of um, bits you can play around with. I'm just gonna select the standard one. So on one side, we're gonna have it, um, if I put a red in front of it, it should display the R on the screen, it should do a cat meow, and then it should rotate in a clockwise direction for 180 degrees. I'm gonna change this one to 90, so we can see a difference and make it go anti-clockwise. Okay, so now we should get a different reaction. I'll upload that program into slot five. So if I put a red in front of it, Okay, you can see here, I get the cat meow. Hopefully you can hear that. If I put a yellow in front of it, I get nothing. And if I put a blue in front of it, it goes back the other way. So, meow that way, and the other way. All right. So you can see that's how simple the programming can be. Okay, it's that really easy, you just, the, the hats, if you like, and these ones, these yellow um, hats that the stacks start with are uh, called that because they're a bit like baseball caps. So it's just a way to remember them. And so you just put your little stacks of code underneath. So when the program first starts, you can see this zeroes down and then the program's ready to play and you just <coughs> put, um, you know, you can use the color sensor to react to the environment. So it's really simple sort of programming like that. And that's, that's basically Scratch programming, which most of you hopefully are familiar with. It's a, a really simple and easy way and for, for students to build their confidence. All right, what we'll do now is jump back and I wanna show you the software itself. So while we've got this up on the screen, I'll come back to the home page, And this is where the, the, the software, this is essentially the, um, you know, the home page for the software. This is where it all starts, okay? So you come in here and there's these five tabs across the top that are the easiest way to navigate through it. So you've got the home, which is where we are, and down here I've got any recent projects I've worked on, okay? You've got these unit plans, so you can go in there. We've got um, building instructions as well. Now, up here on these tabs, if I hit start, I could start there or I can come up here. I just use these tabs at the, cross, at, the, the, um, at the top. Now, this tab is where when you f the kids first arrive and you're just working with the kids, this is where you come in and you start doing some activities, say programming the hub and, and getting it, you know, testing it and making sure it, it works and you can connect it up, okay? Then you come across to motors and sensors, okay, here. And that's where you, you do some activities which you're exploring how to control, you, a bit like I did before, where you might work out how to control sensors and motors um, or use reacting to sensor feedback and manipulating the motors, okay? And then there's a great little activity, and I'll show you a video from this later. It's uh, make, it, make It Move, and it's a really fun activity where there's lots of sort of engineering ideas in it about um, how to improve things. It's that iterative learning that we spoke about, okay? There's extra resources here and teacher preparation. We'll go into some of that stuff after. Then we jump into here, we've got units. Now, the units are all broken up into different, um, different um, uh, topics, if you like. We've got invention squad, which is all about creating an engineering sort of principles, okay? Then we've got, if we jump in here, you can see there's a, a bunch of different uh, units of work here, okay? And I'll come back to that in a moment, but you can see just as an overview, you can see here the units are broken up and they start off 
here, we've got this time, timer here where it tells you roughly how long it's gonna take in a lesson to, to do that particular activity. And that's from go to woe. That's from pulling the box out, opening them up, building the model and, um, and potentially putting it away. Now, some people will wanna spend more time on it because they can see how they can extend the activities and um, that sort of thing. But uh, for most people, that's an indication of how quickly you can run one of these lessons. Uh, then we've got uh, things like Hopper Race, Super Cleanup, which we'll go into after, um, Broken. Broken's one of my, I think it's a really um, great, really well thought out lesson that Lego Education have come up with. And it overcomes that thing where with the students, they will have built a model and it won't quite work. And they bring it to you as the teacher and say, it's not working, can you fix it? And in this case, it, it's to get in, them into the mindset, if you like, that they are the ones who are meant to fix it, that they are the ones who are meant to make it work. It's not your job as a teacher to do it for them. And so with this broken activity, if they've done it, built it correctly, if they've programmed it correctly, it doesn't work very well. And there's ways that they should be able to explore to improve upon it. And so it's a really great activity and it drums home that idea that they are meant to solve these problems. And so I, I like that one in particular. Okay, so there's a whole bunch. You can see as the lessons, uh, they're graduated, if you like. And so they get longer and they get harder and they get more complex. They build on, it, on each other. And so you've got these lessons that are 30 to 45 minutes here. And then you've got a, a lesson here, which is 45 to 90 minutes. And then you've got ones which are 120 minutes plus. Okay, and they move into some really great, um, you know, complex activities that the teeth can really, sorry, the kids can really get their teeth into. Okay, so if we jump back, that's Invention Squad. We've got Kickstarter Business, which is a little bit more encouraging the kids to be a little bit more entrepreneurial and think about how they can um, use ideas in business or you know, commercialise things, that sort of thing. So it's a, a little lead into that sort of um, area of life, if you like. Um, then we've got Life Hacks, which is all about um, little things. It, it's about using data and manipulating and variables and that sort of thing. And um, they've got some, some little activities in there that you can do. And you can see, again, it follows the same format. Each of the units do, okay? So um, then if we go back from Life Hacks, then we've got this fourth one, which is Competition Ready. And that's one all about getting ready for competitions, it's sort of self-explanatory in that sense. But it's got, you know, how to react to lines, about using sensors, that sort of thing. And so it's all about getting ready for the um, RoboCup Junior competition or the FLL competition or some of the other competitions that are starting up around Australia. So it's preparing the kids on what they need to know to participate in those things. And um, I, I'd really highly recommend getting involved in those. Um, it's, it's, I think some of those competitions are fabulous in that sense. Okay, so if we jump back, so that's units, okay? And then I'll come back into this in a moment and show you, we'll drill into one in, in more detail, okay? So if we jump to build, this is where all the different things that can be built or, or where all the instructions are, if you like. So you can come in, if you're not interested in having the kids have the support on how to program it, you might want to have the kids build something and work out for themselves how to program it if you, if you don't want to follow those sort of structured units. You can come in here, the kids have got the instruction to build it, but no instructions on how to program it. So you can just take them in here. So there's all sorts of, everything that's built can be the instructions are here, okay? It tells you how many steps are involved. Say this one, this tabletop game has 25 steps. This break dancer has 33 steps. So it, it, it tells you how long it's gonna take for them to build, okay? Then we come to the last page, which is my projects. This is where all the kids um, or, or the students programs are, okay? So you can come in here and you can, um, you know, you can delete programs, you can duplicate them, you can you know, rename them, that sort of thing. So in here, in this section. All right, so if we jump back to the units, for the moment, what we'll do is um, come in, and this is into Invention Squad. And so, all the units, as I said, we'll go through one of these, and we'll go through Super Cleaner. And um, it's got more here, okay? So you can expand it out. If you're not quite sure, and you don't want to quite go into it, it tells you here 
the things you need, okay? What what resources you need, whether you need, you know, an empty, an empty plastic bottle, a ball of crumpled paper, an apple, that sort of thing, okay? It tells you what level this is pitched at. So this is beginner at key stage three, and it gives you a video, video here. So if we come down here, it'll tell you this one here is intermediate, okay? So it's a bit, a bit harder. So if we jump back to the super clean up one, okay? and I'll play you the video, okay? And you can have a look, and this will give you an idea of what that activity involves. Okay, and you can see there, it gives you a really great video that Lego have put together that, uh, you know, it gives you an idea of what the kids are doing and, and will hopefully excite them as well. So if we jump into the actual unit plan, we come in here and this is, this is the screen that opens up, okay? Now you can see over here, there aren't so many blocks over here that the students can program with. Now, the reason is, this strips it down. It's the whole idea behind, we don't want to bamboozle the kids. We want them to have a really, at this stage, these are early steps where the kids are just sort of, sort of following the examples. So it gives a very limited palette that they can then use to program with. So um, you can see here, we're just dealing with motors and events and some, some more motors, uh, so, so, some, um, some more advanced motors that are available and used for this particular um, design or mechanism. So over here, we've got the tutorial. This is where all the, the guide is, if you like. And at the moment, we're looking at one of eight. So there are eight steps in this. And Lego start off with this, um, they've got this 5E philosophy. And um, what we're trying to do at this stage is engage the students and make them understand, you know, sort of want to be involved in this. So it asks the question, did you see rubbish on your way to school today? Wouldn't it be great to organize a day of tidying up? It's a big job, so you're gonna need some rubbish grabbers, okay? How can you find the best grabbers for the job, okay? So it starts off, we, we've given them a question to try and get them involved and engaged in this. Now, the first thing we need to do is actually build the, um, the grabbers themselves. So it jumps in here, okay, and we're gonna test but part of this activity is to test the the merits, if you like, of different two different grabber types, and I'll show you those in a moment. So we've got um, this super cleanup. We're going to build this particular controller here, okay? So and it's broken up. It's broken the building process up into three steps, okay? The idea here is that the kids can potentially be building these at the same time, or they can share around the actual building process. So they might work together to build them, they might work them um, separately at the same time. But it's with, with the kits and the way they're designed and the um, building instructions, the two or three, potentially three kids in this case, could be all building things at the same time. Okay, so if we jump into one of the set of the instructions, so we'll jump into this grabber two. So you come in and you click in and it tells you what the mechanism up here is that they're trying to build. And it tells you here what pieces of Lego they'll need. So they can grab um, th these, uh, one of those and two of those bits, and they can start putting them together. And you can see, click it in place, and the, um, the next bit here, and, and you know, it gives you a guide. You, again, for this part, you need these, these particular bits, and you add them in. And so the instructions are cumulative and, and um, just build on each other. And you can see as we go along, you start to create the, the actual model itself, okay? And at this stage, I like to reference um, the 19th century, well, the, the 19th century German uh, statesman, 
was uh, uh, who goes by the name of Otto von Bismarck, once said there are two things that you don't want to see being made. One is sausages and the other is laws. And um, I like to add to that, what you don't want to watch being made is Lego, okay? So it's great fun to build, but it's tedious to watch, I find it personally, tedious to watch someone else laboring over it and building it. So, uh, but I love building it, but not interested in watching it. And on that basis, I've pre-prepared one here and I'll just fire up the, um, and share the, um, the screen at the moment. So, okay. And in a moment you'll see, I did tear it apart a little bit to um, grab, so we should be able to see the screen at the moment. Okay, so you can see here, I've got the controller. Okay, and I've got the, um, yeah. So I've got here the controller part that's built. I'll just plug that in. Okay. And you can see I've got these attachments that can be plugged in. All right. So we'll go with this one first. You can see, whoop. So if I bring that back, okay. You can see here this attachment and I'll just add it on. Okay. And plug it in. And turn it on. Sorry about the quality of the, uh, the video there. Okay, and you can see here it is working away. You can just, and you can use that. So the idea of this activity is obviously to create a really good um, tool to assist people in picking up rubbish. And so you can see here, we've got this particular one. Okay, and I'll try and pick up this piece of paper here and it does a pretty good job of picking that up and putting it down uh, we'll pick up this try and pick up this piece of lego okay okay it's oh yeah it does a reasonable job of picking that up okay you can put it up here on the tray okay okay let's try and pick up this set of lego wheels not so great try and pick up the apple not so great okay so if I change that over, and at the moment, we'll change it over onto the other set of claws. Okay. And this time around, let's try and pick up some uh, bits of Lego. Okay get some of those other things out of the way okay so if i try and pick up some bits of lego you can see it's terrible at it but if i try and pick up the piece of paper it can do a reasonable job okay and if i try and pick up these wheels okay it does a pretty good job Okay, you can see as I move that around. Okay, if I try and pick up this apple. Oh yeah, it does a reasonable job. Okay, so you can see there, we can use it to pick up different devices. And so I'll just swap back the video now. Okay. All right, so you can see here with this particular mechanism, that there's, there's room, if you like, for people to improve. The speaker is not working, please. Different speaker, just a sec. Um, speaker, oh, wait a minute. I think it could be something.
Joanna, are you able to are you able to tell the um are you able to type in whether my sound is working correctly? We can hear you. Yes, it is. Great. Okay. It's just giving me a, a, a weird message. My apologies, people, for, for the interruption. Okay. So um Okay, so you can see here, we've got this really cool mechanism. Now there's the opportunity, this is Lego's build. There's the opportunity for, for your students to go in and create their own amazing clause and improve on it. And so, you know, you're not restricted to what's given. The whole idea with Lego is that they'll create their own improvements and, and variations to it. And so part of that, and that would be part of the extension of that activity. Now we'll jump back to the um, instructions, okay. So, okay, so we should be, okay, coming back with the, not quite there yet. And back in the software, good. Okay, so now once we've done the building part of this particular activity, we can then come back and we've got, this is where this is the, the guide. So we've done step two was the two out of eight was the build instructions. Now we're gathering the rubbish. So these are the things you need. Okay. Then we've got play with this program to test the two grabbers. Which one do you think works the best? So here's some sample program that the kids can use. And there's all sorts of ways that can be modified as well, given you're using the, the pressure sensor to, um, you know, you can start to influence how tightly the claws um, close, if you like, depending on how on, on how much pressure is applies, applied. So there's all sorts of more advanced steps that you can guide the students through or ideas like that. Okay, so in this, there's these sort of, you can see here, they've got a, a sheet for the students to fill out. Okay, that's available online and we'll jump online in a moment for, um, for some of the great teacher resources that Lego Education have got there as well. So you can see here, we're doing test one, and that this one is testing how effective both of the grippers are on picking up objects of different size. So you can see I had difficulty picking, using this particular claw to pick up objects, objects really small, like the, um, the pieces of Lego. However, it was quite effective with the apple, that sort of thing. So the students are taking this information and they're graphing it and putting it in a table and working out how to present information. So there's lots of, of nice sort of other curricular areas that this can, can cross over into as well. So now we're, the test two is about object weight. So how effective was, were the two different grippers at picking up heavy objects? Okay, and the kids can go through and rate those. Okay, what's your, and the kids then have to present their conclusion. You can see we're up to step seven of eight. And number eight is how did you go? And you might ask the students to create a video recording and explain their, the outcomes of their research, if you like. Okay, so, um, and, and there's also the ability to do extension work from there and, and make more complex programs, um, have them spend the time creating a better claw that will pick up small things and large things. So, and they can modify it in that way. Now, so that's how one of these units work. Okay, so if we jump back, into the units here, Invention Squad. Now, I've shown you the lessons. Here, next to the lessons is teacher resources. And we can go from there and just click on this and it's got more information online. And so it just checks, ask whether you're a teacher or a pupil. If you say a pupil, it doesn't go through, but if you say a teacher, it does. But um, in here, okay, and I'll drag that up. All right. Okay, so we're now online. Okay, and this is where invention, this is, so we, we clicked on invention squad. So we've gone to the invention squad section. You can see here, it's got um, English at the moment. It's got English and then GB, which is for Great Britain. This is an, a, um, a correction that we've I've submitted to Lego and they've given me feedback that they're going to fix it in the next update. What we want it to do is go to the Australian website because it's got Australian curriculum links in it. So if I change that to AU, we'll go to the correct website. So I just changed it from GB to AU to go to the Australian website. And it's exactly the same. However, this time as we scroll down, we can see all the lessons that we're in. 
We're going to go to the super cleanup one because you've seen the app part of that um, particular unit of work. And here it's, it's a bit more fleshed out, okay? And it takes the time to take you through the five E's, this engaging the students, exploring with the students, explaining things, elaborate and evaluate, okay? So that's the five E process. Now over here, you've got things like key objectives, things you'll need, a list, that sort of thing, but also additional resources. So if you remember, say that, that table that the kids were filling out, that's available for you here. The kids can either, you can have the kids create their own or you can come in here and there's a sample all ready for you to print out for the students. And you can see these are the different um, claw mechanisms here and these are the different objects that the students might trial picking up and how effective, giving them a, a, a negative one or a positive one or a zero rating for that sort of thing. And um, can, students can do their assessment in that regards. So I'll just click back and we'll drop back into that unit plan where we are. And then we've got here the unit, the education standards. So this links to the Australian curriculum, the technology strand, and you can see here all the possible curriculum links or outcomes that can be um, ticked off with this particular unit here. And I won't read through those at the moment, but you can see the, you know, that they're there for you to go in and have a look at. And they're there for all the different units. Okay, so we've got um, things here about igniting the, the initial um, engage phase of igniting the discussion, okay? Some building tips, okay? Design, designing other grabbers, okay? And then we've got some coding tips as well. And then we come down and down the, you can see as we're scrolling through, we're going through these um, sections here, but you know, how to differentiate it, how to make it easier, how to make it harder, how to, how to adjust it for your students. Okay, there's also assessment opportunities and that covers off teacher, how the teacher might do obsess, uh, sorry, assessment um, and self-assessment by the students along with peer assessment as well. So there's a, a little guide there about how you might implement that. And then we come down to some other extensions in the language arts extension, uh, maths extension. And then they've got another one here, which I, I think is quite um, cute, if you like. And it's where kids who are interested in this particular unit might be interested in, in various career links. And in this case, they've got it to um, link to uh, um, someone who enjoyed that particular uh, unit of work, might be interested in agriculture or horticulture, um, business and finance, manufacturing and engineering. And so there's a whole sort of um, guide there for you. Now we'll jump out and I'll jump back into the presentation. We're almost finished. So um, I'll just drink that, drink that. And here we are in the presentation, okay? And that's, they're the units, as you can see, applying the engineering and design process in the invention squad, developing computational thinking skills in Kickstarter business, programming with variables and data, applying the engineering design process with the robotic challenge. Okay. The other, I'll play you this quick little video. Now, the reason I show you that is to show, you know, that's the example of the sort of um, the fun and the engagement that you have with, with uh, groups. You know, that's a group of teachers. You can imagine with students, you know, the, the teachers are happy to get down on their hands and knees and they're playing and they're having fun and they're laughing. And the video, but it comes back to that idea that the play needs to be joyful. It needs to be you know, meaningful. You can see it's engaging. You can see that, you know, that that's those teachers in that workshop. And we run face-to-face um, -face workshops. In, well, we, we did prior to COVID-19 uh, and we will again. And, um, you know, we come together for a day and we do a whole bunch of really cool activities and the teachers, you know, some teachers turn up and they've got no confidence whatsoever. And at the end of the day, you know, they absolutely understand how to use the program and how to implement in the classroom. And you can see with those sort of activities like Make It Move, that's the hopper activity that I referred to earlier in the start section. 
it's iterative. They'll come back and they'll rebuild their robots and create, um, you know, make improvements to make it work better. Okay, and it's you can see it's absolutely socially interactive. All right. So in the other parts, for and and this is the um, I, I just bring this slide up very quickly to show you the links that other units have to the Australian curriculum that are all on that website that I was on before, which in the software you can um, you can link to, or you can just go to, um, you can type in Lego education lesson plans and it'll bring it up for you as well. So um, here we've got the super clean up. I was showing you before, they're just some of the curriculum links. Okay, and then help. Okay, and if it pops up, there you go. Okay. So different, you know, down to, um, you can see number 19 there, it's design, modify and follow simple algorithms following sequence of steps, branching and iteration. So that sort of repetition. So there's, there's lots of curriculum links that can be covered. All right, so the next, the, essentially the final step of this presentation is um, questions, okay? And for those who are, I'll cover this off early, there's been a, um, you'll be pleased to know, there's been a price reduction at um, MTA. We've um, they've come back and reassessed all the Lego product family and we've reduced the price. So those who are interested in quotes can, um, can get in contact with us. If you're not sure, the, the best approach to that is to contact your school rep. If you're not sure who your school rep is, you can email me. My, um, and I'll put you in contact with whoever it is. If you need technical support, either myself or Joanna are there. If you're needing a quote for product, then you can contact your local rep. So um, yeah, and as I said, if you need to know who your school rep is, contact me at jdewire at teaching.com.au. So now, um, yeah, I, I think that's all. As I said, um, the recording of this, if you're interested in it, we had a few requests last time, um, you'll get sent an email. So we might open it up to Joanna if I can, I'll get Joanna on and we will um, start seeing if there's questions that we can answer for you. So, Joanna, Joanna. Okay. And I've unmuted you, Joanna. And, okay. And can you hear me? I can hear you. That's good. Now, if we can, I'll unmute your video as well so everyone can see you. Okay. I shall do that. Start video. And we'll pull up Chris Todd <coughs> as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do we have any questions? Um. Not unless people want to unmute themselves and ask it. Um, they were asking about PD um, on the Make Your Own blog, but we don't have anything planned. Um, oh, the competitions. Um, we haven't really spoken about that. And Spike can be used at all the RoboCup Junior competitions and, and FLL. And um, the RoboCup obviously has been cancelled this year, RoboCup Junior. Um, although in New South Wales, if you're based in New South Wales, we will be running a regional in term four, probably November. Um, so yeah, if every competition, every robotics competition, I would imagine um, that's an open platform you'll be able to use as well as FLL. Okay. Now, are there any other questions at this stage? <laughs> Chris, did you have any questions? No, there's no more. Okay. Um, <laughs> what we might do then is open up the microphone and um, it will allow you to unmute yourself. Um, I'll just go to that <laughs> soon. So. If anyone would like to ask a question, you should be able to unmute yourself. If you can mute yourself after, that'd be great. Just so we don't end up with too much um, background noise. Okay. 
So, sorry, Joanna, I may have been a bit distracted. Did you answer the question, will um, First Lego League and RoboCup, uh, will they be able to use Spike Prime for those? Yeah, yeah, I, I did answer that. Good, I, did, I mean, and it can be used. And as Sue has said, um, First Lego League is on this year. Um, and those details they'll be able to find online, but um, it's at the competitions, yeah, definitely spike prime to be used. Chris also mentioned Robo Ray, so Chris might like to speak. I don't. Um, So yeah, Robo Rave is a new competition which um, will be late on later on this year, and that's open platform, but um, primarily we'll be using a lot of Lego. Okay. You must have answered all their questions, James. Well, if we don't, yeah, if we don't have there any you go. questions, yeah, then thank you to everybody who has, um, you know, joined us and participated. We hope you found it informative. Um, yeah, if we don't get any questions, we'll close it up in a minute or so. And um, yeah. And maybe they can come along to our workshops in the future. Yes. And if any of you would like to have a, um, a one on one or have a demonstration. If you'd like to email James, he can put you in touch with your school rep and um, they can make it a time to come out and see you and demonstrate your spike and help you out with anything else that you may need helping out with. Yeah. They were fun. The students yeah. were a fun. <laughs> No problem. Okay, it looks like all the questions are answered. We might um, finish it up. Okay. Thank you everyone for your time. Really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you.